first time in Dakar, yeah. Love it. So far, I mean, the hospitality has been amazing. You know, I travel the world with my job and not many people look after us like you guys have here. It's great. We're traveling to, we're touring Asia for years now and um, I just thought it was a growing market for work, you know, and with uh, DJing across Europe was great, it's been good fun, but for me it's just given me a second life again to come out to Asia. I love the Asian people, it's just, I think it's brilliant, it's a growing market, you know, I think it's really, this next few years, the clubs are going to get bigger and bigger out here. I think they're generally around two years behind what we do in, say, in London, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, I think mean, now more than ever um, in Thailand, where I live, I'm playing a lot more house and techno, like the same as what I do back home in London. You know, whereas a year ago I couldn't do that; we couldn't get away with it. So they're but they're catching up. And they're catching up quick. Yeah, I've worked with some great, great DJs. Um, and a lot of them got really unsung guys, you know, they're playing really good quality underground house. But it's just so anonymous out here at the minute. But you know, their time will come. Yeah, but you're not seeing many Asian DJs yet breaking over into Europe. Um, but you know, I think it'll come. I think as they're catching up with the music now, it's just a natural progression, you know? Embrace new music, man, and avoid black eyed peas. <laughs> God, James, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, the guy set the whole thing up um, 20 years ago now, you know, um, and it's still today the world's biggest dance brand. There, there is no doubt about that. So, and yeah, you know, James, James knows what he's doing. He's not, we don't see him that often in the club anymore. Obviously, he's, you know, he's not, not a young guy anymore. How often do you do? Um, he still sticks his head in. He, I mean, he's still quite hands on with business affairs and stuff, but, you know, the, the guy's made a legacy. There's no denying that. Uh, ministry have been doing tours for years. I mean, I think I first played for Ministry about 15 years ago, and I think that they they constantly adapt and move forward. When you know, as, as times change, Ministry have moved along with it. That's why they're still around now, 20 years later. Um, and I think they saw an opportunity where you know to help the brand grow. It was clubs were hiring in brands and stuff like that. So yeah, obviously, Ministry have gone with it. They're market leaders. Um, just because of what they've built up, you know, Ministry stands, stands for quality. Wherever you are in the world, if you go to Ministry of Sound Party, you expect the best. And, um, and they're, they're quite strict about that, you know. Um, I was told it's mainly funky house outside, so um, it'll be quite on a nice, defected sort of tip, you know, similar to what you'd hear on the, on, at the club on, on their funky house nights. Um, you know, just quite upfront and cool. Nothing cheesy. For me personally, you know, I I had hit records. My, my first big hit was in the early 90s, when um, you know, I it's, it's provided me with a career ever since. And I I stopped making records around 10 years ago now because of the illegal downloading and with copying and stuff like that. And I think a lot of talent stopped as well because there was just the revenue wasn't there with it anymore. I don't think it's a good thing. I, I think illegal downloading is wrong. I think it, it's it's cutting a lot of people's livings back. Um, I'm sure you know you, you adapt and you change with it, but you know I don't agree with it. I don't I don't think it's a good thing. Yeah, I mean ministries have always been you know way way bigger than just about the London club. Um, but you know the, the ministry and with a record label, I'm, I'm sure they'll say it themselves. It, it's illegal file sharing and downloading is killing talent. No matter how you look at it, you know people can say oh, it's it's a good way of getting new guys can get new material out there and everything else but I mean I, I get sent around 200 tracks a week that I don't have time to go through you know and no, nobody has time to go through that that amount of new music so I think that the, a lot of the talent that is out there gets overlooked if they're unknown anyway so I, I don't think file sharing is help, helping anyone out I just support it I don't particularly think they do to be honest there's um, I think the last 10 years have seen some of the best clubs in London close. You know, you've got Fabric was in trouble recently, mm -hmm. Matter closed, um, you've had the key, Gross, Canvas all gone, Turmills, you know, these clubs were institutions, I had some of the best times of my life in those clubs. And the kids coming through now, just, they, they don't have them options. I, I don't think the government supports clubs at all in the UK. That's why I live in Asia now. 
how do you know? I, I don't know, it's hard to... So when you're doing, if you're trying to run events in a different country and you're, and you're not in those countries, you have to rely on the people that are there, that, you know, they're, they're your lifeline. Um, I, don't, I haven't got, I don't know why the venues have closed out here. Um, I know that, I know that it's been tough in Asia in recent years and I, I honestly think that it's only now they're, they're really starting to get, get sort of the, the bigger clubs, the bigger brands and, um, you know, I, I think now is a good time to get out here. It's, it's a shame that those venues have shut previously. I think Bangkok was, what, about 10 years ago, I think it closed. It's, maybe it's about due for another one, who knows? Yeah, oh, that, that's come on so far, man. Um, again, I, I've always adapted and, and moved forward with it. When I, we started on vinyl records 20 years ago, then we changed to CDs, sort of in the early 2000s, and, and now like, I'm completely digital. I, I don't use CDs at all. Um, I mean, it makes it really easy, to be honest with you. When, if you're just using the software to basically beat mix, it's a bit, you're cheating a bit to a certain extent. Whereas if you get, hear me playing a techno club, I'll have four decks up, two controllers, and you know, you're just splitting stuff up on your, because it, the music is so accessible now. Everybody's got the same music I've got. So the way you sound different and prove your worth is by cutting stuff up and editing live. And so you're creating your own sounds out of mm. tracks as they're playing. And I think that's how you'll stand out. Now. Hi there Asia, my name is Phil Drummond from Ministry of Sound, you're watching dancesignal.com.